Hello everyone, it's Morris here and today is day 13 I think of uh, Axie Infinity Origins Season 2 and now we are at the Epic Era and I haven't re really been covering too much just because uh, now it's still, you know, people are still trying to get the rare runes and charms and so that's why like it's probably a lot of the pros especially at the top are just kind of waiting for the marketplace to open or like, people to be able to mint the rare runes and charms and then get the most optimized teams so that's why I feel like not many people are actually kind of trying to climb at this point uh, you can see stats is really just like leading by a lot like basically maybe 150 points and uh, I would assume that this gap will definitely be closed after people can get their hands into the you know runes and charms that they actually need for their build and so yeah now it's kind of like a waiting kind of scenario where okay people are just shopping around different axes and then um or maybe like doing the breedings and then waiting for the marketplace to open and once the marketplace is open and they can get the runes and charms that they want for the optimal build then i think the real competition will start so that's why i think uh, i'm just gonna quickly like, scroll through um, um but some people i might not even be playing their optimized team but stars team is definitely uh, the one that i would want to highlight and see how strong it is uh, I can see uh, that there's actually different iterations as well. Last time I saw it's a different kind of team, or at least the mid. And now this mid is very strong, I think, because with the tri spike uh, and the wing horn as well, double wing horn here. Um, but before I get into that, let's quickly go see what else is out there. So you can see the top a lot is still the swirl stuff. Um, yeah, which just basically stays on top. And then, yeah, the tri feather stuff as well. And those are the main thing you use basically see at this point um some beast stuff as well uh yeah so it's mostly like tri feather just a lot of stuff either very strong attack or some sort of disruption kind of thing so i think this one is more like a jinx kind of thing uh which is quite interesting as well uh, maybe like this world and jinx i don't think they work the same way but similar in terms of uh, curse it's just that world puts it in uh, the opponent's draw power which can be a bit stronger but for Jinx, it can be very strong uh, later on, especially in the Mystic era, because then you just have a lot of ways to put a lot of Jinx in the opponent's deck, and basically their second draw cycle is going to be pretty bad. Uh, good to see 1437 also up here as well. Yeah, quite a nice beast that uh, he has. And yeah, I don't think I'll scroll through too much because it's mostly, you know, it, this will definitely change over time. Uh, and now people are not really playing like the optimal build at this point just because they don't really have the runes and charms that they need especially the charms I feel the runes uh, I guess like quite a lot of them has like all the epic runes already but it's more about the charms that you sometimes you win maybe four copies of like the scotch tape or something right uh, which I think wouldn't be surprised that I will see a lot of people just have the tape because uh, retain is so strong um, okay, let's before I dive into the stats team, then uh, let me just look at this uh, top thousand players. And now the beast is really coming down and it's getting more even now, I feel. Everything is getting played quite a bit. Um, of course, like Matt is still a bit low, I think. It's just, um, it's actually pretty expensive to get a good mech, that's the thing, right? Because if you have a good mech, it's actually very strong. Um, yeah, with all the shield and stuff, but it's just maybe a bit more expensive. Beast probably is still the cheapest in the sense that a lot of people bred Beast for the last season, and um, it's just still pretty strong. Okay, let's just get into Stars team. Mm. So it's basically like an uh, AoE kind of team with this feather stuff as well, but there are quite a lot of tech stuff. First, uh, we have quite defensive runes here. Right? Uh, Calcium armor is very good actually uh, because it gives you 40 something shield every turn, so it's just mitigate 40 something damage if the opponent hits the front. Prehistoric armor also, I think, probably like they buffed it and now it's quite OP, I feel. Or even before the buff, it's pretty OP as well because. Uh, well, actually, no, before a buff is, is not as strong, but now because it actually gives you one spike every t round. So then, yeah, you, like once you get hit four times, right, then you'll get 32 uh, blood spike already, and that's already very strong because with the tri spike, that's basically doing leafy level of damage already. 
And it's not that hard to set up because like once it, well, you can get hit pretty often. Uh, or at least you'll probably take 4 hits before it goes down. And it's not just uh, the try spike, it's because once this goes down with the blood spike, let's say if you take 5 hits, uh, then you get 40 blood spike and basically you are doing 40 damage. Uh, yeah, it's just 40 AoE damage. That, uh, that's also very strong. And also, uh, it has this uh, buff uh, effect where every time it gets hit, it heals for 8. So basically, it's just mitigating 8 damage every time it gets hit. So that's why I think this is another very OP rune. And then healing force actually goes pretty well uh, with AoE stuff in general. Yeah, just this, this one doesn't... I don't think it has Yeah, the Robin because uh, it actually couples pretty well with Robin because it actually heals the robin back as well if the opponent doesn't have any way to deal with the robin then this the robin is going to do a lot of damage uh, but in this case it's really just a bit of healing a bit of uh yeah aoe which also still contribute to the game plan i would say so yeah let's just actually get into the games and then we can look into the runes and charms more Okay, so let's just see. Uh, yeah, you can see the win rate is pretty insane, right? And that's why like uh, he can be able to stay on top for so long. Uh, because yeah, it's just uh the tough part is that because he's just so far ahead, uh, that every time he wins the game is like three or four, whereas you lose is sixteen. So that is I think the tough part. Yeah, so every time you lose a sixteen, and then but the win rate is just pretty insane. It's just because this team is I would say pretty optimized. So this was the like original team and um, yeah which is a very similar kind of build but uh, with a beast instead but now with a reptile which I feel like could be even stronger um, yeah so that's why I wanted to actually feature the reptile team so actually let's just yeah, get into the game okay let's just pause here a bit first and so let's just look at this so first of all calcium armor give you about 41 shield and this couples very well with square teeth as well so uh yes i think this is very strong um just because yes uh this basically will deal like 50 something damage already um just because of the armor of course you do give up the armor but then it's basically a another burst damage kind of thing right because you're just using zero cost to deal like 50 damage so that's uh yeah just pretty strong and then um yeah, the rest is pretty standard, I would say. Uh, it's just very defensive uh, in general. Uh, even if you don't use the square teeth, it's just mitigating 40 damage every turn, and that's pretty strong. Of course, um, assuming that the opponent can't backdoor or something, meaning ignore the shield. So, yeah, I think yeah, it's just a lot of feather stuff. Uh, the Kestro can actually do quite a bit of damage as well. And uh, yeah, I mean, Kotaro is just a very strong card because of the death mark, and death mark is very good for kind of aggro build because it's just going to do a lot of damage okay then let's look at the mid so this one as i mentioned right prehistoric armor this gives you one spike every turn and then it heals you as well and never gets hit so yeah it's just very very good in general because uh especially with the tri spike as well uh choosing to actually opt for a lot of the vitality which is good i guess uh that's because uh, you do have a lot of damage already and just keeping this alive is the key because uh, the, lo the longer it keeps this alive then uh, once you get to try spike then you can actually deal a lot of damage interesting they put the tape on uh, the wing horn which is probably makes sense because uh, this is very situational you don't you only want to play it when it's late game and then pinchy as well uh, this is the draw card kind of card and this very important for certain kind of matchup basically against swirl so maybe we'll see this uh, in effect and interesting for the topaz i'm not so sure how this one fits in maybe it just happens that it comes with these five cards and so okay just take a topaz because i do feel that uh there are other cards that are better i'm thinking about like gecko or something right then you can actually prop another prop of uh, sp the spike into blood spike and also cleanse up your ally and so on so i do feel like you know this might not be the most optimized still and then finally the uh back uh similarly yes this is all these strong cards with the wing horn having the tape as well it's a, again a late game kind of thing um yeah there's a bit of healing and a bit of aoe so but it doesn't really synergize too much is because it doesn't have any way of summoning 
anything i don't think so it's really just uh again like not the most optimized i feel at this point still uh probably better to use like other stronger runes when it's available um but yeah at least you know it contributes to the game plan of dealing the aoe damage uh, getting a lot of these kind of passive aoe as well from the charms and then yeah i think uh hungry bread is strong and then of course little piece is always strong as you all know so this is kind of just like a strong aggro build let's see the opponent opponent is a very standard uh actually a pr no, i don't say standard it's just pretty strong uh team in terms of the uh swirl because um yeah, you can get rid of a lot of cards, so this one is gone, this one is gone because of the exile and also allows you to survive for longer. Uh, Nemo for the ram, and then yeah, this one just removes this card basically. Uh, and then you have the tape as well, so basically all these cards will be either gone or retained. Uh, so make sure that you get to the swirl. Next one, the mid, uh, again, yeah, being able to retain it um yeah so you retain as well so these two get retained and this will be gone so you basically have these two left basically uh and got the swirl so yeah and not being able to get rid of these two kind of might hurt the opponent a bit so not the most optimized and then yes yeah, so this one we gone the banish uh this one gets a retain with the charm this one will be gone with the yeah these two will be gone with the uh charm as well and this is retained so basically you just have swirl yeah i think this is probably enough because you have swirls swirl swirl three swirl and these two cards and i guess the it's fair like because these two are the two that you would want such that um yeah you do get a bit of card draw so you every turn you probably want some card draw if the opponent hits into you so that allows you to get into the swirl more and this one is just dealing damage and also like uh, gaining a bit of hp so you probably want to play this one as well uh and it is the uh, kind of a backdoor thing as well so yeah okay let's just see how this plays out yeah so both teams i think pretty uh, optimized at this point of course not like perfect but yeah it's pretty good so uh yeah our opponent is going with the game plan of just playing all the cards and then keeping all the retain cards possible if they don't need to retain it naturally cactus also very good is because you retain it uh, and then like let's say if your front is going down especially if you're going against beast then uh, you can uh yeah then you can uh yeah, be able to target the the redirect the attack to here. Ah, I forgot to mention. Yes, the square teeth has the charm that gives you fifty shield. And good to kind of know how it works is because it actually deals the damage before it gets the shield. So the fifty shield will be there, but in this case, it's wasted because the uh, opponent is just choosing to do some more defensive and just ramping. Um, at this point, yeah, okay, interesting to just kind of float an energy here uh star so yeah we shouldn't we should keep the wing horn probably because this is so important going for the card draw opponent is just really going through the game plan playing out i assume all these things and then retain this yeah just keeping on the retain cards it seems like um let's see if the front will actually go down i think that's the main thing yeah so if the front goes down it's gonna be a bit rough yep so wing horn uh oh very unfortunate there yeah, the wing horn actually hits all the yeah because it just randomly hits right so i don't think that was a taunt i think that was pretty lucky uh, to be honest because if the front didn't go down right then uh, i don't think that i probably expect the front to go down just because uh yeah, because a lot of this AOE and random attack, it just happens that it all goes to the front, I think. if Yeah, so if that's not the case, then the opponent might be able to actually lock them, them into the swirl. But once the front goes down, I think that's pretty much GG, but you can still see how strong this build is. But yeah, it's just unfortunate this one doesn't actually highlight, like, show how good this uh, blood spike is. It's because it doesn't really uh well doesn't really get hit but at this point it's pretty much over just because the feather is stacking uh yeah it's just a lot of ways of getting these feather dagger still got a lot to go 
Yeah, and that's yeah. And just really not enough ways of going throw at this point, just because you do get. Yeah, yeah, uh, you do need all your three axes to survive to get three swirls so that you kind of lock your opponent into, you know, not being able to draw. But um, opponents, um, stats does have the pink sheet as well, so that if in any scenario like this, you can just use the pink sheet to get to the next draw as well, and that is basically GG. Yeah, so this one is pretty one-sided. Of course, there's quite a lot of RNG involved uh, in terms of just hitting on the front. I think there was a, an RNG. I don't think there was a taunt or anything. Um, yeah, so if the opponent's front actually survived, then maybe it's a very different game. But, uh, I mean, that's Axie. So let's still play another game. Okay, let me pause here. I think it's the same team here. Let's just look at the opponent, which is... Uh, Huh. Yeah, I'm trying to see like what's the deal here. It's because okay, similarly I have the square teeth and the uh, calcium armor with this uh, yeah energy drink here. Give you 50 shield back, and then natural yeah, star. You no, know, uh, I'm not seeing a pattern here. And so that's why I'm actually quite interested to see how this works. And then like a spear. Uh, yeah, and then this strong cards, but. I don't know how you know. Um, yeah, there's the sin like that much synergy across. So, oh yeah, it's a Korean Coast team. Yeah, so I guess it's not the most optimized, but I guess it still works as an aggro. So let's just see how this one goes. And I feel like it might just be get out aggro. Is it? Um, so it's more uh, in this case aggro versus aggro. So let's just see how this one go plays out. Um, yeah, still pretty strong turn, I would say, right? So just uh, playing the tri feather hopefully hits. Uh, okay, hits two is still not bad. Of course, you should want to hit three so that you get more feather. Yeah, and then, yeah, you can see how strong the uh, armor, right, this custom armor is. I think it's really very strong. Uh, I've yet to get my hands on it, but uh, yeah, I can see it's definitely one of the stronger defensive rune because it just mitigate 40 damage every turn and it can be converted into an attack like this right and then gaining 50 as back again is just so much value for zero cost it's a zero cost basically a deal like 40 50 yeah, 50 something and then yeah get 50 shield so yeah there's there's no no downside in a way Okay, uh, so we managed to burst through the front um, with the help of the corn tail, but this team you can see the only one corn tail. Um, and yeah, I still think that this is not the worst uh, situation for stars, I feel, but maybe it's just because the defensive. Uh, the custom armor is gone, whereas the opponent still has it, and that gives Sakarenko the advantage. Uh, yeah, this actually, you know, hitting. I mean, of course, you do want to get that uh, value, but then it actually, yeah, you give this uh, prehistoric uh, armor quite a lot of value in terms of the blood spike. So, already three blood spike, uh, three spikes procced. And you can see, right? I guess, yeah, that's just the main thing, right? I guess that's is really using a lot of resources just to get through the front with uh, the 40 every turn. And okay, but do get a lot of the feather. So, yes, yeah, trying to should be able to KO the front with all these. Now, uh, especially if you are just getting on the feather. And of course, yeah, the tri spike is going to do a lot now with the feather as well but sister hasn't got to the try spike unfortunately and it's gonna be gone already and yeah couldn't really finish off right um so that's a tough part right uh, only doing 24 and not being able to do the try spike and ah wow yes the stroll star really cle cleanly kills it off because otherwise it will prop another prehistoric armor uh, yeah, it's basically just get out aggro, but it is still very close though. Uh, I think it is really the oh sorry yes the first uh, yeah the second contail that basically seals the deal. So uh, wow, first like yeah, I actually I would say actually not bad. It's because it just has a lot of the strong card. But of course, it's a lot to do with the draws, and in this case, it just happens that. 
uh, starts to reach onto the the good cards, and then Akarenko just managed to out out tempo uh, with the two coin tail. Okay, so it's a pretty quick, uh, yeah, pretty quick video. Is because uh, yeah, it's just aggro, aggro is of course like the the. Um, games are a lot shorter as well, which is to be honest, I, I like in terms of the play style as well. So that's why I also like to play a aggro kind of build. But so this is it for today. Thank you for joining me, and I'll see you next time.